This week on Born to be Nomadic, we get down and dirty with the bilge pump. And we remember our times in Las Vegas with the dance by Paul. It's a disgusting and dirty job, but somebody has to do it. Hi, I'm Angelica. This is Paul, and this is our dog, Dean Martin, but we just call him Dino for short. And this is our 1980 Morgan 382 Sea Angel. Subscribe and hop on board as we outfit her for adventures in the Caribbean. I wanna kiss you on a beach, breathe you in like ocean breeze. Sway to the crashing of the waves. Let the sea side side set stage. The bilge cover is stuck. Jack and dirty down there. Today's project that we're tackling is changing out the bilge pump and adding a different bilge pump um, because there's all kinds of crazy things happening with our bilge. Like for instance, the black water tank, the, what's supposed to go to the black water tank when you flush the toilet is going into the bilge. Um, we don't know why that's happening, <laughs> but First, we need to get a working bilge pump because we do not have that. That's what we're working on right now. We're cleaning out the bilge to get it ready because it's super gross in there. Yeah, just go uh, flush some water down the toilet and let's see if it fills back up. using this bilge cleaner and if I can find a link I'll put it in the description and this was what was suggested to us to really clean out the bilge and you put a little bit in there and then you put it into the bilge and you let it sit for a while and the agitation of the boat is supposed to help clean it but we'll see what happens we'll see so we filled up the bilge with water again and with some of the cleaner stuff and uh, we're just waiting for that to sit for a minute then we're going to empty it out again because we just keep trying to flush it to get the grosses pee pee out of the bilge. And then we're gonna replace the bilge pump. So fingers crossed that this all happens before five o'clock. So this is straight up disgusting in here. And the bilge did not work, the bilge pump. So there was just a bunch of water in there. <laughs> so we use the wet vac to get it out. Shout out to our friends Penny and Anita that told us about this wet vac. We need to take the old bilge pump out before we can put the new bilge pump in. So this is us removing the old bilge pump. You can see that it's much smaller, but it's also pretty gross because when we bought the boat, there was water that had been standing in that bilge pump for probably a long time. And then with the black tank overflow situation, things got a little bit kind of nasty inside of there. And so um, we are taking it out and getting ready to put the new bilge pump in. I decided to go with a bilge pump that was stronger than the one that was currently in the bilge. Mostly because that was all that was available at the local store, Blackburn Marine. I will put the link to this in the description and you can get one yourself. It was really actually pretty easy to install after we figured everything out. This bilge pump has an automatic turn on switch. So we did not need a float switch in addition to the bilge pump. And that's why I really liked this particular brand. So <laughs> we got this out, which was making it too long and just super gross. We put a new one of these in, it's a different size, but that's in there. And through many trials and tribulations that we were not able to film because of the small space, we were able to get the bilge pump into the bilge and it has 
the new clamps on it. Um, they're not really in the directions that we'd like them to be, but they are, they are in there and the bilge pump is in there. So now we're going to try wiring them and hopefully the bilge pump turns on and uh, turns on uh, manually and turns on automatically. So there are three wires that come with the bilge pump. You got your black wire, you got your brown wire with the white stripe, and you got your brown wire without a stripe. Black wire will go to here, to black wire. Brown wire with white stripe will go here, and just brown wire will go here. I'm not, I'm no electrician, so I don't have any idea what that means. I'm just doing it exactly the way that it was in there before. All right, now Paul is snipping the wires and stripping them so that we can put waterproof um, connectors. The way they had it done before, it was not waterproof. So, um, water could get to the uh, wires and they were shorting so um, that was part of the problem um, so we're now connecting the wiring and then we're gonna heat wrap the wires together with our fancy new heat gun that we got this is our fancy new heat gun it's not it's not on they're not <laughs> heating it um, but we got a really good price on it. I'll leave, a, I'll leave a, a link in the description to this heat gun because it, it was not expensive at all. And uh, it's small and we'll be able to take it with us on the boat. We're going to use this also to strip the, um, the teak up above and uh, redo that. Here I'm clipping off the old connector. It's not waterproof and this is the bilge. It could get wet. Don't want it to rust out. Give it a second. There we go. <laughs> So power goes to the bilge pump and we turn it on at the switch. It turns, it turns on whether there's water in there or not. And um, now we're going to see how it turns on automatically, which is the problem we were having with the last bilge pump is that it just didn't automatically turn on, which now makes me wonder if it was an electric problem and not the pump. So um, that's kind of stressing me out. We will see. We will see what happens. Ready? Ready. Oh, wait. Not ready. We're pouring water into the village. And hopefully we will turn on. No, this should be coming on by now. Okay, so there's a copper wire. And then check behind the stairs and see where that goes. Uh, nowhere. Oh, okay. Well, that could be the problem. There's no power. Gentle. Gentle? Oh, it does look like gentle. <laughs> so you were talking about the black tank? What's going on? 
We are day two into working with the bilge and we have figured out, we think we figured out, or at least we know more about what's going on. First of all, the wire that connects to the manual DC power for the bilge, it's supposed to go to the battery, the wire that it connects to inside of the bilge actually doesn't connect to anything over on the other side uh, closer to the battery. It's just a wire to nowhere. So we connected a wire from the bilge pump to a wire that goes nowhere. Um, and that uh, obviously is not giving it any power. And so that's why we can't run, the, the bilge doesn't run automatically. The second issue that we were having was that the black tank is overflowing into the bilge and it was really gross. We could have two different issues having here, happening here. We filled up our black tank and it's overflowing. And what's happening is either one of the seals where the tubes go into the black tank have broken and that's releasing number one and number two into our bilge, or there's actually a crack in the fiberglass and that is allowing black water to come up into the bilge. I think that's probably less likely for two reasons. One, because it didn't happen until we accidentally overfilled the black tank. And two, because before we accidentally overfilled the black tank, there was still water in the bilge. And I would think that that water would seep down into the black tank if there was a crack. So that's just my thoughts on it um, because of gravity. But obviously I have no idea because I'm learning everything. So I'm gonna show you the different parts inside of the bilge now. Down here. This pipe right here comes from our toilet and sends everything that's in, that's coming from the toilet, it sends it into the black tank, which is below the bilge. And then this pipe right here is where it comes out where it's being pumped out at the pump station, which we're going to go and try and figure out how to pump out ourselves today. So we're making progress, and I think that that is really wonderful. Hey, guys. So after our setback last week with the bilge pump and the automatic function not working, we troubleshoot and found that one of the wires was disconnected. And so we had to replace the battery, the line going directly to the battery. Uh, we were able to do that by running the cable this way through this cabinet, up around near the first aid kit, and then directly down to the battery compartment, which is under the quarter berth. We put a 15 amp fuse <clears throat> to protect the circuit. And we heat shrunk the connectors. and placed it right on the positive terminal, right there. Where's your fuse? Oh, it's all close up there. Nice. Right there. What are you doing there, Paul? So we're running the brand new 12 volt line down here from the bilge, up back through there, back through there, back through there, all the way straight over here to the three batteries. And we're gonna put a 15 amp fuse before the battery. This is the auto line, so it's gonna be hot all the time, unless we pull the fuse. Here's the heat shrink. So that we have a watertight marine grade seal. Whatever that was, was that last week? I don't remember. 
Yeah, that's the ad that I was running last. With our first major project done and under our belts, we decided to go and have a cookout. We made some impossible sausages and vegetables on the grill while we watched the sunset. I really got to enjoy living on a boat. It's not all fun, at least yet. We haven't even sailed yet, but <laughs> we're definitely enjoying ourselves and learning new things. Join us next week when we actually get to sail our boat for the first time. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you. And it would help us out so much if you liked and subscribed so that we can keep you in the loop. Hop on board. We'd love to have you. Thanks again. See you next week. Bye.